I'm Ursula and I work for Norfolk Rivers Trust. We're here today on the River Nar to demonstrate an electrofishing um, survey. Uh, we have a generator and a control box and these two power an anode and a cathode which creates an electrical current running through the river and it um, stuns the fish. I'll pass you over to Jonah who will tell you a little bit more about what it does to the fish. Hi, so I'm Jonah from Norfolk Rivers Trust. Um, how it works is the electric current through the water gives the fish a little shock. Um, not enough to kill them, you shouldn't ever kill fish while you're doing this. And the fish come shooting out from wherever they're hiding, under the weeds or under rocks or wherever they are. Um, we're standing in the river with hand nets and we just scoop out the fish, identify them, which we'll show you again in a minute or two, um, measure them and put them back. And they should all go back in the river unharmed. Um, one of the keys to the survey is we've got a stop net at either end, so you've got to seal off the survey section to make sure nothing's moving in and out as you're fishing, otherwise you've got no hope of counting the actual numbers if you're after a population density estimate. So very important, we've got a net at either end, nothing's moving in and out. We fish through the reach twice, it's usually 50 or 100 metres long. Um, that fits in with the Environment Agency standards, um, which were designed to monitor the Water Framework Directive. Um, and so on the first run through the first survey we'll catch maybe 70% of the fish um, you do miss quite a lot and there's a lot you just don't see then you do a second run and you catch 70% of what's left of the fish and then a third run again and you're catching less and less each time and if you plot a graph of those numbers that gives you a very good a reasonably good population density estimate Okay, so here we have one of um, our iconic chalk stream species, a brown trout. It's identifiable by its adipose fin, that's a key feature of these fish. I'm just going to measure it, and what we do is we measure all of our fish to the fork length, which is the fork in the tail, so this one's uh, 190 millimetres. Um, they're absolutely stunning fish, they've got these beautiful spots, and they vary from region to region as well. We also check underneath if they've got any tags um, and we record them if they've been tagged because um, other, other organisations tag their fish and we like to keep an eye on what's been going where. Um, this is quite often because we, we're monitoring sea trout so some of them might go from rivers to the sea and then back again uh, and it's really interesting to see where fish come and go so uh, that's why we keep an eye on any tagged fish. Uh, all the survey data from um, today's electrofishing surveys is used uh, to add into the Environment Agency's data but also as part of a pre and post project restoration. Um, so this stretch of river is uh, an existing stretch of river and uh, as part of Charlie's project he's restoring and recreating a whole series of floodplain meadows, meanders, backwaters and other river features. So. Um, we will be monitoring these rivers and these new features and the existing features as part of the project for the next five years. So with every fish we measure them, we take their data, we will be weighing some of them as well just to see what kind of weights they are and we'll be doing that in the existing channels and the new channels and feed into a wider project. And what we're going to be using that for actually is to look at which river features are most effective for fish, which are best for fish. Um, so we can actually compare the new, new rivers and the weight of the fish, the length of the fish over the next few years compared to the existing channels, which have been very heavily modified. Some of them have been dredged and widened and um, just really heavily damaged and managed by man.